Hello, YouTube. Is now the time for us to talk about yet another warning or a potential double top, which is what these arrows point to? Why? Jeff Gunlock sees a very painful economic downturn ahead, and the S&P may be forming a double top. So this weekend, we're going to go through and talk about how, if that double top is going to happen, what exactly it would look like. Let's give you a preview right now. Um, the reason why this matters is because below 470 is bad, over 480 is good. And uh, on the weekend video from two weeks ago, we talked about how the stage was set. And then we got a fail because we fell below that 470. So now what really matters is that the bears got the chart to a bad place. Now it's up to the bulls to get us to a good place or rally by only roughly 1.5 more points. This also really matters because the bears failed to capitalize on momentum. We got a warning. We got early confirmation but we failed to get that actual confirmation. So remember, we want to be like Warren Buffett. We want to have the patience to see these patterns play out. And um, now that we're talking about what a double top would look like, we have a lot of charts we can look to to templates. Here we have the semiconductor ETF SMH, and we note that we have our all-time high, and then new all-time high to all-time high back test is about six months. So what happens? We have our all-time high from 2022, then we form a new all-time high into 2023, and then we go down and then we go back up. It took six months. So the second we make a new all-time high, we back test. Chips lead tech, tech lead spy. So that's semiconductors first. Now we got XLK or a spider managed technology ETF. What do we have? All-time high, new all-time high, a back test. And then plus six months, we have our new all-time high. This chart also plays out on the DAX or Germany. So all-time high, new all-time high, the back test and the new all-time high. That's going to be very important for us because uh, this is going to potentially take six months. So we have to be patient. We have to make sure we're able to see these things through. Why? Because they're patterns. And the saying is that history does not repeat itself, but it often rhymes. So when we see all these charts rhyming, 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 let's make sure we don't ignore them. And also, what I want to make sure of is that with the new format we're taking on these weekend videos, two weeks ago, we talked about how the stage was set, then we got a fail, and now we're talking about how now is the time to be receptive that it's not time to add a whole bunch of extra risk. So that's the high-level overview. We're going to go through some other things like the overview and why 480 is the only number that matters this weekend. We're going to talk about what is green year-to-date. You might be very surprised. The VIX, the 10-year note, the dollar, the S&P, and the NASDAQ are all green so far in 2024. We will come back and look at those a little bit later in the show and do some analysis on them. We can also look here to see that we have the S&P and the NASDAQ both inside of neutral lights on both the annual and the monthly level. I'm going to ask you for a huge favor. If you could please consider smashing that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you're new here. We do put out stock market videos every single day. Thank you very much ahead of time. And um, that's the simple story for this weekend. So let's pick it up where we left off. If the double top's going to happen, I respect Jeff Gunlock's opinion. And uh, we have to go back to that same pattern we're looking at. So if we now go to here, just to give you a quick preview, if we pop over here to the S&P, we talked about how we were looking for a very repeatable pattern of um, failed breakout, uh, weekly lower low, and then monthly lower low. If we delete weekly and put in monthly, now let's look back to these patterns here because you might be very surprised that the, the same thing happens. We get a, uh, that's not a failed breakout, but we have high, lower, high, lower, high, low, lower, low, lower, low. Fail breakdown, fail breakdown. So if we just listen to Warren Buffett, this will eventually serve us really well. It happened in the Germany. We got the failed breakout. We got the lower high, lower low, close below the low. Happens one more time. Then we get our bottoming pattern and go back up. So this chart is likely going to give us the template here. Let's be patient enough to see it through. This will be very important as well because actually I got the screenshots here. Let me just go through the rest of the show here. So um, the flip side is that we're going to hold those higher lows and higher highs. Really, really, really simple. We have to wait for the close of January before we see that. And the reason why this matters is because uh, we've went from extreme fear up to extreme greed. And this is not a really good indicator when we start pointing down. Right now, the S&P is pointing up, uh, but the charts do not really agree at this moment in time. Down, down, down. Is this time different? Well, it could be. But if it's not, we're probably due for a little bit of a, a drop, right? That double top, which could lead to more downside. Let's be mindful of that. Uh, and here's something I found super, super interesting. It might be time for us to go down because the bears capitulated. Oh my goodness. They covered 100,000 contracts short. They reduced it by half. So they went from basically 50,000 contracts to over 200. And now they're right back down to 100. So 
Maybe now that the Bears have covered, it is time to go lower. If we look at the year-to-date heat map, it's very mixed. Um, the leaders of last year are still, still the leaders of this year, other than Tesla and Apple. NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, Meta, they're all crushing it. Um, healthcare is also doing quite good so far this year. Um, the reason why this matters is because the S&P 500 tech, sec tech sector valuation, uh, the forward PE is 25.4, and we have 17.4 as 17.7 as the median going back to 7, uh, 1999. So we're, cur we're currently a little bit richly priced, and this will really matter because we're going to find out whether or not that AI hype train has more juice in the tank. When Samsung reveals their AI uh, their AI phone, which is going to be dubbed uh, likely the Galaxy S20 X24, which is going to be revealed on January 17th in San Jose, California. So I'll be paying attention to that. I want to see whether or not the market can actually continue to expand uh, beyond the multiples we currently are at at 25. And then uh, otherwise, there are some things for us to worry about. Top risks in 2024 include the U.S. versus itself, um, the Middle East, right? what's happening over in Europe. There's also ungoverned AI, so that's an important one. And then also uh, geopolitical tension around the world. So a lot of geopolitical geopolitical tension uh, potential going into an election year that kind of really matters in terms of earnings we saw banks kick it off on friday and we have a holiday monday so on tuesday we're going to start getting into the thick of it but big tech will not be coming around until the following week and uh, we'll talk about that next weekend so it's really about banks uh, so far it's a nothing burger which means there's been no major headlines here's a note from uh, liz ann sanders who is someone who i respect she's at charles schwab she says that geopolitics among reasons to expect more inflation volatility. If inflation volatil if the inflation volatility we saw this week with CPI can persists, the market will have some indigestion. That is easy to understand. And she's highlighting, highlighting geopolitics, which we just talked about as some of the top risks for this year. Fed to begin rate cuts this year, but not as soon as the market is expecting. That'll be important because we have our first rate meeting on January 31st. Um, so with all that said, we have the AI hype. Uh, the train should continue this week if it's going to continue here. Um, we talked about how the stage was set. We got a fail. And now it's up to the bulls to fix the chart by getting what? Only about a couple points higher. So unless we make that higher high at 480, have the patience to please see these patterns play out. And then we have to wait for that monthly lower low, which means we're going to have to wait until the end of February. Man, that's going to be hard. And then do we have up to six months to really wait? Well, ask yourself, have your actions in your trade account been showing greed or have they been showing fear? If you're showing greed and we get technical feedback that we're going lower, you have to be willing to flip like me, where I'm telling you that right now, from my perspective, technically speaking, we're in a yellow light for the annual, yellow light for the monthly, yellow light for the uh, for, for NASDAQ on the annual, yellow light on the monthly, which means it is time to be cautious. Our foot is over the brake, but we're not stopping yet. Why? Well, we haven't received this key factor here, which is confirmation. All we've had is a warning and early confirmation. But until we actually get confirmation, we can kind of avoid this. And now going into this weekend, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to have to reset the pattern. So we're going to have to see probably uh, either. It depends on whether or not we get a failed breakout. If we don't get a failed breakout, then it just takes two sets of lower highs, which means we don't really need number one because a failed break breakout does not happen every time but it is going to be important for us to be receptive to the idea it could happen. Why? Well, a higher high this week is going to be basically 479 and our all-time high is here at 480. So like we're within kissing distance of getting there. Um, we're awfully close now. And I say this also because uh, about a month ago now or three weeks ago, uh, Liz Ann Saunders just said more increased volatility and we kind of warned you too. Friendly reminder that we are now in extreme greed and it would be a great time to manage risk in your account. Setting stops, raising stops and trimming. And now it is a time It is a time to manage the risk in your account one more time. Why? We are just going to have some more increased volatility. So you need to be prepared for what happens if I'm right, what happens if I'm wrong, and what can happen in between. All right, now, now let's go through the notes because this is where I want to start focusing more on charts. So the only number that matters for me is going to be 480 on SPY. To keep, keep it really simple, one chart, one number, that's it. Why? There's likely going to be lots of noise with news, economic data and earnings. It is best to focus on the levels into the end of January. Why? That's when the Fed meets. And we're going to hear about big tech earnings going into the later part of the month, which means not this week. So when we get over 480, does it hold? We just showed you the double top would mean that it's not going to hold. 
I think at this point now, we're very likely going to get a new all-time high. Like I said, is it, is it, is the, the question for me is mostly, is it going to hold? Not do we get there? And the reason why I find this awfully funky is because the lead so far this year is actually volatility. Volatility is up by just over 2%. The 10-year note is up by 1.94%. Then it's the dollar by 1.05%. The NASDAQ, sorry, the S&P is now up by 029 and the QQQ is eking out a marginal gain of 0.01%, uh, 0.01%, one bit or four cents. So now we're going to go through each chart one by one. And this is the part where I just want to show you my current thinking on the daily, weekly, and monthly chart. All right, starting off here with SPY stock. And I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to go SPY stock. Why? Let's make this very easy for you to play on playback if you want to watch the individual tickers. All right. So in 10 minutes, we got the whole weekend deep dive out. I think I did a great job with those notes. If you agree, do me a huge favor and consider smashing that thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much ahead of time. All right, SPY. Um, so here on the daily chart, we can note that we have some red, we have some uh, some green, and we got some blue and white. So red is resistance. I would still say 476 is, is resistance. We have a key area here at 477.56, which is going to be our um, annual higher high. We just talked about that. And uh, if we continue the pattern here of going higher, um, we should be able to get to that 480 fairly fast. We also want to just note that from where we are right now, uh, 455 is like a, a lot further down than 480. So the potential upside is quite small compared to where I think support is. This is also confirmed because we have a monthly higher low at 455. We have our 50 DMA. Now it's, uh, what is it at? It is at 459. And we also have our previous top here at 459. So if we break 455 now, like that's bad. We should find some support ahead of that. Um, but let's just be mindful of 476 and 477.56. Why? Because of the current price of 476.68, we're roughly stuck in the middle. So we're really close to resistance, really close to that new all-time high, but not quite there yet. I would also note that volume is dropping off. So as volume drop, drops off, as we go higher, it just means uh, people are not really excited about this. They want someone else to punch it higher. So let's just let's just be mindful of that. Now going into this week, what do we do? Well, um, we clearly don't have a warning anymore. So I think what we want to be mindful of is just what are we doing here on the weekly chart? Let's delete everything and start from scratch. Why? It's probably what we need to do. So I would argue that we're not currently pointing up because we've not yet reclaimed our uptrend. But we could do that by uh, this week getting up here to about 485. So I don't think that's going to happen. I could be wrong. But what I'm going to do instead is actually revise this uptrend to make it a little bit easier for us to follow now. Okay, there we go. Does this make sense? I think that does. So what this does now is actually gives us a little bit less of an acute angle. It's less sharp, but now it shows us the trend is still higher for a period of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candles, or basically two months. Um, that seems pretty good. That seems good enough for now. So now we're going to get a decision here as to whether or not we're going to pass or if we're going to fail by uh, the 12th of February, which we can see right here. So as we're going into the month of uh, February, closing out the month of uh, January, I just mentioned is so important, we'll find out whether or not we're above or below. And uh, this week, I would not want to see us print a weekly lower low or get back below 468. That would not be good for me. And uh, the reason why is because if we now pop over here to our monthly chart, um, if we go down to 466, it means we're actually going to a monthly lower low. And the odds, the odds increase that we could be going back down to roughly 455. And I'll explain the reasons why. So we note here that, um, let's just get rid of all this stuff here. So let's go back here to the current pattern. Let's delete everything because um, I want you to pay attention to the pattern we're looking at on SPX, which is this one here. So we have November, uh, sorry, we got, uh, yeah, we got, uh, where we got here? So we got November, December, here we got November, December, a little bit of a correction ahead of time first, right? A little bit of a correction ahead of time first. But we're, we're focusing on those two green candles. So November, December, here we got November, December. And then in the next month, that's January. Well, right here, what do we have? We have January. That's a red month. And we close close to the low of the month. So if we repeat uh, the pattern here for the next three candles, which means November, December, January, this one should come back down to 455. Again, history does not repeat itself, but it often rhymes. So if we come back down to 455 and you're going to be scared, that's why you want to manage the risk in your account right now. Don't wait until we get back down to strong support and you become a little baby, right? Selling on support. So we want to see January close over 480. Jan has to close out to, for, for us to reset the stop. That's what we talked about too. 
So let's be very mindful of that. The other theme we talked about for the beginning of 2024 was don't fight the Fed. So we just got the pause and there's a Goldilocks scenario between the pause and the pivot, which is why I would have preferred if we just power up from here because we need to get a safety of margin over the all-time high so we can back test the all-time high and pass it. Plus six months, that gets us to the middle of the summer. And I do not particularly like that. I would be much more comfy if we do something similar to what we did here on SMH, where um, let's go to XLK actually on a clean chart. So what do we note here? Well, we have our all-time high. We come all the way back down. A double top just becomes a cup and handle and the cup and handle just goes higher. So what we're battling for right now is whether or not we're actually going to get to this new, new all-time high. And I'll tell you the reason why people like Jeff Gunlock might be a little bit more worried. So now we're going to finish off on spy stock. It's because man, they got this, this bad omen of what happened in 2000 and 2008, where a double top led to a 50% decline and a 50% decline. I don't know about you. I don't want to lose half my money. So that's what they're worried about. That's the entire world collapsing. And um, I'm not hoping that happens. So let's make sure we pay attention to it. All right. Now we're going to talk about QQQ. So we're going to talk about the Qs. Um, so QQQ. And again, I would prefer to look at SMH or XLK, but I just know this is the one that people track the most. So QQQ, here we go. Um, QQQ. So looking here on the daily chart, let me just double check. I can reset. There we go. QQQ. So right here, very similar. We can note that 408.71 is our previous all-time high, and we're currently above that. So massive cup. If we form a handle, I do not want to really, I do not want to see it go back below that uh, recent top, which will, which will become a little bit more obvious on the higher time frames. But this will look just like SMH if we see that. So right now we can see that we get pop, flag, pop, flag, pop, flag, pop. And what's really important here is that let's delete everything, make it really, really, really simple because I think that's what people want. They want a simple story. So when we look here, um, we have our previous top. Um, we got our previous top and now we're going to have a new top. So this might seem so simple that you're like, man, why did not think, why did I not think about this before? Well, this is the beauty. Uh, this is the beauty of uh, hindsight. So we have an all time high here. Sorry, not an all time high, but a relative high. So we have a high here. And then what happens? Resistance turns into support. We get over the area, we back test it, and we pass. That's a pass. So we pass this area. Okay. Does the same thing happen on the next one? Yes. We form our next local high, relative high, recent high, whatever you want to call it right here. We get over, then we back test it, and we pass. Oh, so we get pass number one, pass number two. So for the NASDAQ, again, chips lead tech, tech lead spy, SMH already new all time highs, XLK already new all time highs. Apple, new all-time highs. Microsoft, new all-time highs. Those are the big dogs. So now we need smaller caps in the NASDAQ like QQQ to join the party. By what? Getting over the previous resistance, back testing the resistance, and then passing. That's it. We need to get above 413, back test 413, and pass. If that happens, hey, the gravy train continues. We go higher. The bears get squeezed. The bulls are happy. And uh, it's a great 2024 for the bulls. There you go. There's our daily chart. Uh, moving forward here to the weekly, uh, very similar to the S&P where um, now this note is less helpful. So we're just going to go ahead and delete it. And what I'll likely do on the Tuesday stream is to go back through these charts and I will update them live for you. So again, please make sure you subscribe if you want to see all of that great content. I will be live at 9 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday. All right, let's go forward. So on a weekly candle close, uh, oh, I didn't even I didn't even actually check this before I signed on. This is a record weekly close for QQQ. Let me just double check this to make sure I'm not lying. I think it is. Um, the close here is 409.52, 409.56. Oh my goodness, we got it. And that's why we're green by four cents on the year. That's the last candle close for 2023 right here. Um, that was our previous record close. Um, the week we made a new all-time high. Again, a record intraday high. On a weekly candle close, we just got a new all-time high. Nice. Looks like the bulls are pretty strong here. And uh, that 408 area here for the all-time high, it's actually 408.71. You can see that white number right here. Um, what we need to do now is to get to 413, like I just mentioned. So we got to get over. We got to back test, and we got to pass. That seems awfully simple. Last note here, this uptrend is also no longer relevant because it's broken. So again, it looks broken because we breached. We are now below it. I don't think we're just going to snap right back over it. So... We'll give it a small adjustment here like we did on the SPY. So there we go. It's done. When do we get our decision? By Feb 20th. So I just hold my cursor over the apex, which is where the two lines meet. I look down to the bottom. I get the date. So by the end of February, both these charts 
both the S&P and the NASDAQ are either going to fail or they're going to pass. And now that we look here at the monthly chart, this will be very important because if the, if the, if the QQQ, again, we call it the NASDAQ, but it's really the Qs, um, if this is going to follow what um, SMH, what uh, XLK, and what the DAX had to do, man, it's going to be six more months before we get that new all-time high, which means the second half of the year will be bullish, not the first half of the year. We have indigestion for the first uh, for the next six months. Then we go higher. So poke to a new all-time high, come back down, and then we can go back up, maybe back here to the 70% retracement, which is a Fibonacci area. Um, otherwise, if we can close the month over this previous candle high at 413, um, hey, all bets are off. The bulls are in charge. They're gonna they're gonna want to take it take the chart higher. All right, now going through a little bit faster, I'm gonna look through the uh, only other charts that I think are relevant right now. I'm gonna look through the dollar. I'm gonna look through the VIX, and I'm gonna look through the 10-year notes. Now let's go to the dollar. DXY stock. There we go. Dixie. Let's talk about the dollar. So there's a few things that are competing here, which find it a, which make it a little bit more challenging to tell us what's going on. So we got a death cross here. We got a bounce, bounce. Now we're right here. Let's go to dollar. There we go, dollar stock. So I don't like the word, sorry. I'm, when I say I don't like, I mean, if I'm a bullish doll, if I'm bullish on the dollar, um, I think this is bearish. Why? We're, we're below both averages. We got a death cross. What I see forming here is a shoulder, a head, and a potential shoulder. So if we hit, the, if we hit these averages and back off in here, I would want to see it actually fall back below this head, right? Uh, the, the neckline, sorry, the neck right head. Um, or make a new low to confirm it's not actually a potential uh, bullish pattern. Otherwise, if we shoot over and backtest, uh, that'd be exactly what we talked about. Um, can previous resistance turn into support? If we can clear it, backtest it, and then pass, maybe we're off to the races here on the dollar. Why? Looking to the weekly chart, we're right here on very strong support. We're still pointing up. We are below our 50 MA, though. That's going to be at 103.50. So if we get over that, backtest it, then we can likely make a run for the high we established earlier. And just look at the pattern here. It's not that I want this thing to play out, but I see a potential massive W playing out. Uh, that doesn't give me warm and fuzzy feelings. I'd rather see the head and shoulders play out here where we rejected the 50 MA, go down, that makes stocks go up. Just trying to be realistic here. Looking at the monthly chart, same thing. Going back more than a decade now to 2011, we can note that we're still pointing up, which is the green line. So we're pointing up and... Um, what used to be resistance, right? Resistance, resistance. Well, it's we got to find out if it's support or not. We got an apex here, which is going to give us a decision by the end of April, which would be plus three months from now or three candles, just like on XLK and SMH, we have those three red candles, right? Uh, we actually only have two there. If we go to SMH, it's basically three. That third candle is barely red, uh, barely green, sorry. But if we look here on SMH, the template we showed you earlier in the show, on that corrective wave, we got one, two, three. That would get us to April. All right, there you go. Last one here. We're now looking at the U.S. 10-year uh, note. So U.S. 10Y. So popping here to the one-day chart, let's look at uh, U.S. Oh, VIX, actually, sorry, too. I'm going to go through the VIX just because I think it's relevant. So let's go here to, I'm trying something new. Hopefully, you guys appreciate this. We're doing about 13 minutes of charts here. So looking at the uh, VIX, uh, similar note. But remember, um, to keep it really simple, the VIX is the biggest gainer so far this year. Then it's the 10-year note, like we just looked at. Then it's the dollar. So these things are headwinds. Now, it's very unusual that the VIX or volatility, the 10-year note, the dollar, uh, S&P and the NASDAQ all go up together. So one of, some of these charts are going to give. Which ones? I don't know. I'm not confident at this moment. So we're below both averages here too for the VIX. VIX is at 12, not even into the low teens. On the weekly chart, we have a death cross. Usually means more downside. We're also below both, which would be a kangaroo. And a kangaroo for me is defined here by I'm um, just going to our education. So if I show you a thing here, bullish is when we're over both the 50 and 200. So 200 is the black line, 50 is the blue line. A bear is when we're below both. So bearish when we're below both. And then as this case here, um, we have a kangaroo when we're stuck between the 50 and the 200. So to make it really simple, we're bearish on the daily, bearish on the weekly. Um, but sorry, on, 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 the, on the daily, we are bearish. On the weekly, we are kangaroo. And we've stopped going down. So we have some competing patterns here. Um, we have to pay attention to this area here at four. Sorry for bouncing around so much. Let's go back here to US 10-year note. Um, I think it was actually just on the VIX. So let me just go back to here. Let me go back to... I'm trying to be too fancy this weekend. So here we go. Let's go back to the VIX. So VIX, um, looking back here to the weekly chart, we're below both. And looking to the monthly, uh, we're below both. 
there was two competing patterns we were looking at. We were looking at a head and shoulders, which is the dominant one right now. We failed to reclaim 23 or the averages. So looking bearish. It could still be, again, could. Uh, but this right side here wouldn't really make it look like a W anymore. So I'm not as not, not as confident on that one. Finally, rounding it out with a US 10-year note. Um, let's go down here. So US 10-year note on the one-day chart, bearish. We're below both. Death cross in the making. So that usually means more downside. Will it play out this time? Let's pay close attention. It's a really important chart. Uh, oops. Let's go here to the 10-year note. Let's go to the second board. Um, now, this is the one where... It's a kangaroo. We're stuck between the averages. Um, we were going down, but we're stopping to go down. We don't really have an uptrend yet, though. What we have to look forward to here is this. So back to the 10-year note. Low, higher low, higher low. So technically, we are pointing up. And there's more precedence in this pattern because it's bigger than the short-term one. So we got some competing signals here. I think we have to pay attention to 433, which gives us the number here back to our relative high. That would form a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder. All right, finally, let's look at the monthly chart. Uh, this one here is a multi-decade pattern. It goes all the way back to the 1980s. Ironically, 1988, which is when I was born. That was a long-ass time ago. What did we get? Well, we got a death cross. And that led to what? That led to 35 years of basically declining interest rates. Well, what do we set the form right now? Well, we're forming a golden cross. So what could that potentially do? 30 plus years of a new regime. Oh boy, 30 years of higher interest rates. Well, it hasn't been that long yet. It's only been uh, about three years, but hey, if history is going to repeat itself, uh, let's make sure we don't ignore it. All right, with that said, I thank you so much for tuning in. I'm now going to defer you back to the 2024 video from the uh, from our homepage on, on YouTube if you want to watch my thoughts going into the entire year. If not, subscribe here on the right-hand side and hang out with us at 9 a.m. on Tuesday. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you on the next video.